for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. Spear me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest me into destruction and sayest, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. When it is past, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which grow in the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. We are consumed by thine anger, by thy wrath, all of the trouble. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Days of ideas are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four scores, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, will be soon cut off and be flies away. So teach us to number our days. We may apply our hearts unto this. And now is Christ risen from the dead. Come the first fruits of them that seed. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of God. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Every man in his own order, Christ, the first one, after him, they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, and he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. He shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. He must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put unto him, it is manifest that he is expected when which did put all things unto him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things unto him, that God may be, in, be all in all.
then those that are here can come and meet the family as well.
Stone, Masonic Lodge, retirement community. We certainly do bring you greetings. I don't want to be inappropriate, 
but we do want to go to the hills from which cometh our help. Amen. We look, come on, to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help, it cometh from the Lord that created the heavens and it created the earth. If you'll go with me in your spirit as we surround the throne of God in prayer, as we pray for the comfort of this family and for this church family, can we go? Father, in the majestic name of Jesus, no other name that's given unto men whereby we might be saved, but by and through the precious name of Jesus. And so we come with our agony and we come with our heartache knowing that you are the God of comfort. Knowing that you are the God that will wipe away our tears. We come now on behalf of this family. And we lift them up before you today, God. And we ask that in the night season, that you will visit them with your ministering angels. That you will hold them up lest they dash their foot against a stone, as you said in your word. Lord, you said that the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we say so on this afternoon. Oh God, our hearts are heavy. Our tears are flowing night and day. But you promised that you would wipe away all of our tears. And we thank you today. To God be the glory for great things you have done. Hallelujah, God, you knew this hour. You knew, hallelujah, sir, before the beginning of time. God, so we thank you. And now we entrust our cares to you because we know that you care for us. This we ask in the majestic name of Jesus. Come on and say it with me again. Jesus. Jesus. Uh -uh, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. He is our help. In this midnight hour, God bless you.
situation where you're free, you can raise it. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't even matter what it feels like. When you're free, you can praise it.
We don't celebrate like the world celebrates. Because the world don't see no hope. But those that are called out ones, we call them the Ecclesiastics. Those that know Jesus for themselves, we don't, we might cry for a minute, but let us get ourselves together and we'll be able to celebrate right on with you. Because we know that this is not the end of the story. That they, we got a home that's made, that's not made by man's hands. It's eternal and it's in the heavens. Amen. This time, before we go any further, I want before Sister Desiree comes to, to do our acknowledgments, if, if you are part of the ministry, no matter what church you're from, if you are in ministry, I would like you to stand. I want the family to see the clergy that are here represented today. If you're part of the clergy, please stand. Please stand, clergy. Clergy, y'all stand. Amen. 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 We thank God for you all your service. I'm going to tell you this. Listen, we can't tell you how to feel. We don't know how you're going to feel. But I will say to you on this, though, that if you need us, we in the moment where we're celebrating here in the four wall structure, but if you need us after today, yes. if, you, if you need us someday next week, yes. if you need us sometime several weeks down the road, I want you, some of y'all got our numbers, call us. Because you know what? We are here to serve. Bless you real good on this one. We ain't even supposed to really say that. We're just here to serve. That's here to listen, if you got to vent, do what you got to do. If you need someone to someone show up and cry on, that's what we are here for because God has called us in this time. It's no longer just about having church, but we're going to be the church. Amen. 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 So at this time, Sister Desiree Lee is going to come and I think she's going to read a few acknowledgments. Now, the family is permitting. Come on, Desiree. Why she coming? After she reads the, the, the cards and things, if there was any of the family that would like to have some remarks, they are permitting. They said no more than two minutes. We're going to stay on that time frame. And the way we're going to be able to keep the time, that when the music starts playing, it's time to wrap it on up. Amen. The family wanted me to say a select few letters, an acknowledgement of the homecoming. This is from the Bishop Benjamin W. Men Sr. and the East White Oak Missionary Baptist Church family. To this family of Sister Deborah Yvonne Wilson. We are deeply saddened to hear about the passing of Sister Deborah Yvonne Wilson. It is our prayer that the cherished memories you all have of your loved one bring comfort to your hearts, joy to your spirits, and may the peace of God be with each of you in the days of Amen. The next one is from the Benajah Mount Zion Holiness Church of God and Family and Bishop Felicia G. Kelman. With our deepest sympathy, with each moment, with each hour, as you honor and remember your loved one, may memories of their love cradle your heart with the gentle warmth of heaven's grace. An excerpt from Numbers 6, 24 through 25. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Thank you. Next we have Um, I'm going to say seal if I'm not correct. I do correctly apologize. May your memories bring you comfort. May the pre precious memories of your loved one be a comfort to you now. And may it help to know that many thoughts are with you in your sorrow. Thank you. The next one is from Melvin Herbin and family. In sympathy, 
The stories of our lives are written moment by moment and how we're loved and the day-to-day -day things we've shared and in the many ways we've touched each other's hearts. May all that you share bring you peace in your time of sadness. Thank you. The next one is from Patricia Richmond, Richardson and family. Nothing loved is ever lost. No one who has ever touched a heart can really pass away because memories remain and love lives on with deepest sympathy. Thank you. The next one is from the Bryant family with sympathy. Praying that the hope of heaven and the promise of eternal life will bring you comfort in your loss. Thank you. And this is from the Johnson family. Thoughts are with you. Hoping that the comforting thoughts of friends and family will surround you at this sad time. Thank you. Amen. She always supported me. And one thing about Yvonne, she loved her family. She loved Cookie. She loved Tony. She always talked about them. She was so proud of them. She was so proud of her grandkids. She loved her brothers and sisters. And she always used to say, my mother told me, when are you gonna get married? Because if you get married, I'll pay for the wedding. And she told her mother, she said, no one is good enough for me to marry. But for 20 years, me and her stood, stood strong. And I might have not been good enough, but I was strong enough because you had to be strong to be with Yvonne. <laughs> Timmy this, Timmy that. And I finally got the chance to go with Natalie and them and see Timmy in Pennsylvania. And Timmy, she used to always say, she hate to see you coming, but she hated more to see you leave. <laughs> and she eventually realized you all were so much alike, and she realized did nobody party and enjoy herself more than you did, other than her. And she loved y'all, and she loved all her friends. And I just want to say I'm, a, I'm so glad to be a part of this family, and uh, y'all stay strong. <laughs>
bags of groceries along with my plates. Her spirit, gracious. What's right is wrong, right? And what's wrong is wrong. And she had no problem telling you. If anybody know my Aunt Yvonne, have I know my Aunt Yvonne? Say yes. Yes. My little one Nathan, he said, you know my mom, Aunt Yvonne would always talk to me. They would always have conversations, you know, and he'd be like, you know, she always called me Damien. And I was like, how'd you feel about that? He said, like, mom, it's okay. It's all right. I knew she was talking about me. So the next day, we got ready for school. And he was like, Mom, I'm sad, but I'm going to go to school. And I was like, yes, I understand you said It's okay to be sad, but you know your Aunt Eva would want you to be happy. Right, Nathan? She would want you to go to school, do your studies. She knows you're on the AB honor roll. Let's go ahead and strive for that AB honor roll like we talked about. Right, Nathan? That's right, Beth. So he was like, yes, Mom, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And he felt better. He was able to go to school, okay? That afternoon when I picked him up from the Boys and Girls Club, he was excited to see me. And I was like, kind of worried because, you know, he's, he's eight. What's going on? So he was like, Mom, I got to tell you something. I said, what happened? He was like, I uh, asked the teacher if I could make an announcement. And I said, well, okay, what happened? He was like, I said, I'm sad today, but um, um, I'm very sad, y'all. My Aunt Yvonne passed. I miss her and I love her very much. And I was like, well, how did the kids react? And he was like, oh, Mom, they said nice things to me. He was like, they was very supportive. And I was grateful. And he felt better. So my takeaway from this, and hopefully yours is, be courageous. Be encouraged. Be uplifting. Love one another. Thank you. Once you get the clothes on me, I'll go around the big schoolhouse right now and come back buck naked. She'll grab me again, put the clothes back on me, and, and give me that wet floor. I couldn't wait to get old enough to know what clothes were to keep them on. <coughs> she would keep the beef to eat on. But, uh, I just want everybody to know, and my sister, and the ones that know her, she lived like she died. Good. But this time I know more than likely you know like the email all read the obituary, but we'll take about a good 30 seconds just to kind of read back over it silently.
there's a pool called my sister. I was born tonight, you know, you see it over here. Tomorrow hearts have grown closer with the passing of time. Through ups and downs of life, we have we've come to understand what it means to have each other. Sometimes we talk often, sometimes no. Doesn't seem to matter, the feelings of closeness remain with me because I know you're always there. That is from the Wilson sister. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we are approaching ourselves to the, what we call the highlight of the Protestant worship. Thank you. Which is the preaching of the gospel. And honestly, at this point, it's not for the preacher to put her in heaven or to, to send her to hell, because that's not our job. Our job is to preach the truth. That's between her and the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like all of us, that's between us and the Lord. So, after we hear from Deacon Vincent with with our sermonic selection. The next preacher we that we'll hear is that of our outreach pastor, Pastor Laverne Womack, as she comes to give us words of comfort, words of strength, words of clarity that will help us and encourage us to keep on going as we continue to live out the rest of our days. Hallelujah. There it is. A lot of times at a funeral when someone passed on, gone to be, we don't know what the Lord be doing. A lot of times we ask a lot of questions we don't understand. And a lot of times when the Lord is at work, we don't understand because we are too close to the mirror to see what he's doing. Because every time we look in the mirror, all we see is our sin. Well, I'm too close to the mirror to see what you see. Lord, you keep showering down your blessings, your blessings on me. As far as I can see, I guess I'm too close to the mirror to see what you see in me. I said I'm too close to the mirror to see what you see. Lord, you keep showering down your blessings, your blessings.
to come and take her out of this body. So we want you to realize that if Jesus was saying, do you believe this? Do, do you believe that I am the resurrection? Do you believe that I am the life? And if you believe that, you are guaranteed. You have a guarantee that you will be able to see Jesus Christ uh, for yourself. I'm going to try my best to stick with my paper because we didn't have church two or three times in here today. Uh, I, I, and uh, uh, so a lot of preaching was taking place. Uh, so I just wanted to go through my notes and just encourage the family. Amen. So to the Wilson family, we come to celebrate the life of your loved one, Deborah Yvonne Wilson. There is never the right words to say when death knocks at your door. That's why today I'm going to God, the creator of life. To God the Father that cares for her life and knew exactly what Deborah Yvonne needed. And God the Son who embraced her to finish her purpose in her life on earth. Family, God understands exactly what you are going through when your loved one suffered and died. He knows your hurt, pain, tears, and sorrow because he too lost his son Jesus to death on the cross to take away the sting of death and to give us eternal life. And so Father, this death is nothing new to God. Uh, he understands what you're going through with. He understands when, when the sister was hollering out and crying and didn't want to let go. He understood because he had to watch his son down the cross yes. and torture. He too had pain to watch his son do that and he had to turn his head from his son. So he understands what you're going through with. Jesus is a comforter. And so family, Jesus comforted up family just like you in the Bible. He really did. A, a family that was born through bereavement time, that had lost a loved one. Uh, can't nobody, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. He can take sadness and turn it into joy, amen? amen. Uh, that's why I'm going to tell you how Jesus com comforted a couple of sisters when they lost their brother. Death is not a pretty sight. But to God is victory in Jesus. It doesn't matter what caused the death, whether it was a tragedy, a disease, a plague, illness such as cancer. It doesn't matter what took them out of this world. What matters how you live while you was in this world. Uh, because death is a promise. Death is a promise that we all gonna have to meet one day. So don't worry about how Yvonne died, right. but worry about how she lived her life. Amen. Death is a choice for you to be released from the corruptible body and to receive an incorruptible body and to be in the presence of the Lord. You can't see Jesus unless you leave this body, amen? Don't try to hold on to something that you know you're going to lose, but hold on to salvation. In order to be with Jesus, we must be born again. We must believe in Jesus. We must come out of this shell. Blood and flesh cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So let me tell you about the comforter named Jesus. How he comforted two sisters whose brother died from a sickness. In the book of John 11 chapter, about a family of two sisters, Mary and Martha, and one brother named Lazarus. Uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus loved them. Well, Lazarus was very sick, and the sisters, they sent for Jesus. Yes. Oh, when you're sick and down and out, who are you going to call on? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And so Mary and Martha had such a relationship with Jesus. They knew about his healing power. And so when our brother was so sick and he looked like he was going to die, they called for Jesus. And so Jesus was out of town, and they sent word, go get Jesus and tell him that the one that he loves, his friend, Lazarus, is sick. Surely when he get this 
word, Jesus will come and he will take care of the situation. Isn't it like us today? When we have issues and problems, we go to Jesus. Because can't nobody do it like Jesus. We call on the one that has power in his hand and authority. We go to the one that said, I will fix it for you. And so this is what Martha and Mary did. They sent for Jesus. But when Jesus got the word, he said that this sickness is not unto death, but it's unto the glory of God. Don't you know that everything that we go through with is for the glory of God, that he will be lifted up, even at a time like this. Amen? Even at a time like this, we had to glorify God. And so Jesus took his time because this process had to take place. And I'm pretty sure Martha and Mary were sitting there waiting for Jesus to come anytime when he got the word. But how many of you know that Jesus is always on time? Always. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Amen. Amen. And so as the family gathered and, and there was mourning, many of the Jews would come to Mary and Martha home and, and they would pray with them and they would bring them food and they would talk with them and they would hug them and they would tell them, oh, we're here for you. But we know that sometimes that helps and it does help that like all of you that are here today, you come to comfort the family. We come to comfort you the best way that we can. But can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. It's a hurt way down on the inside, sister. And it's a hurt that men and women cannot get to. It's a place that Jesus said, I don't want to get there. Because when I bring you out, there's going to be glory into me. You're not going to give no praise to me that they help you get through this. You're going to say if it wasn't for Jesus. If it wasn't for my Lord and Savior, I never would have made it. The comfort of Jesus, he knew exactly uh, what to do. So during this time, Jesus stayed away uh, for two days. And traveling time to get back, Lazarus had died. So Lazarus was put in the tomb. And Martha heard that Jesus was coming. And she was so excited that she ran and, and she met Jesus not too far from where Lazarus was buried. She was not excited, but Lazarus was already dead. <clears throat> but she was still excited to know that Jesus was coming. And, and when she got to Jesus, listen to me. When she got to Jesus, she told Jesus that if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had been here, Jesus, maybe my mother would not have died. But how many of you know that Jesus was right there with mom? Because now, since he went to the cross, he made a promise that he'll never leave us. And he'll never forsake us. I'm just going to come with you with the word that Jesus is using. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection yeah. and the life. Yeah. And so when Martha went there and she said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He would not have died. And Jesus looked at her and said, your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. Family, your sister, Come on. not this body. Come on. It's like the rest of her body going back to the dust. Yes. But she's going to rise again. Yes. It's corruptible body. Yes. A glorified body. Yes. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell them. It's not about this body, because this body is already planned to go back to the dust. Yes. I don't care how good you are, yes. how much you praise Jesus. Yes. I don't care how much service you do here on earth. Yes. This body is still going back to the dust. Yeah. But it's your soul what Jesus wants. Yeah. He's coming back from your soul. Yeah. And if you're born again, if you're born again, uh, he's going to reap that soul. Yes, and he's going to put it in a holy place right where yeah. he is. Amen. Yeah. Oh, to God be the glory. Yeah. And so uh, Jesus told her, said, your brother will rise again. Isn't that good news? 
huge family. It's comforting to know that somebody said that your sister, your mama is going to rise again. We all are going to rise again when he's at That's right. Oh, to God, because Jesus tells us, I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. That's who I am. That's who I am. But yet, Martha still didn't get the precept about what Jesus was saying. And so Jesus went on his way, going to where Lazarus was laying in, 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 in the tomb. And by that time, Mary, she comes and she sees Jesus. And, and it's ironic that she says the same thing to Jesus that Martha said. And she told Jesus, if my brother, excuse me, said, if he was here, yes. if he had been here, my brother would not have died. Yes. They were not accusing Jesus by not being there. They were just saying, Jesus, I know. Yes. I know if you had been here, I ain't no doubt about it. Uh, my brother would have lived, because I know you. I know your power and your authority. I know there's nothing too hard for you. I see you raised the dead back to life. So Jesus, if you had been here, I know that my brother would have been living today. And Jesus, he is speaking about what they said, and he began to groan in the spirit because I want you all to know who I am. I want you to know not to depend on what you see and what you hear. I want you to understand that I am the resurrection and the life, that I can bring your brother back. By this time, Jesus was saying, where, where is Lazarus at? And they said, he's over there in that tomb. And he went to the tomb and they moved the rock from the tomb. By this time, Martha said, wait a minute. He's been there for four days dead. And he's speaking right about now. Jesus, you don't want to go over there. There's a dead body in there. And he's speaking. Jesus didn't pay attention to that. Move the rock out of the way. Move the stone. Jesus began to pray to the Father. He reminded, he reminded Martha, said, what did I tell you over there? He said, he said, did I tell you about the resurrection and the life? And, and he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. Uh, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You believe in that? And, and Martha believed it. He, she, he believed, she believed in Jesus, what he said. And he said, that this is done, that God will get the glory. And so after he prayed to God the Father, so that people would understand that he is the Son of God. Yes, Jesus prayed. He's a praying man. He was God the Father. He was God the Son. Jesus was God. But yet, he had to go through praying to teach us how to pray when we're in trouble. And when he prayed, he said that Jesus came out. And he said to Lazarus, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come on. The dead body, they've been dead uh, for four days. Jesus, with a loud voice, said, Lazarus, come forth, family. The resurrection. Yvonne's name is going to be called Eva.
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride of door for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Oh, look what God is going to do for those who make it over to Zion. They will dwell with God, and God will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away benefits. Wipe away all tears from their eyes. You're not going to have any more tears. A benefit. And there shall be no more death. You don't have to worry about dying anymore. A benefit only when you cross over. Now, now the sorrow, no crying, now, never shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. This is what the saved, the, the believer, has to receive when they cross over. Sadly, yes, you're going to warn today and tomorrow and the days to come. But when you think about the penises that Yvonne has, she will want to come back here. Oh, now you got a benefit that you don't have to pay no more rent. <laughs> you don't have to go get a health plan. Maybe that Medicare, A and B and all this kind of stuff. Kind of see if you got vision care. You don't need no vision care there. God will give you full benefit package, amen? This is what the benefits we get with Jesus. You're going to live again. If you don't know Jesus, it's hard for you to comprehend this. You just thought that when you die, that's going to be it. That's not going to be it. You're going to live forever and forever and forever. And you're going to have full benefits in Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of these health plans. I'm tired of this medication. I'm tired of having to go through this, this body of being attacked with different diseases. Yes, I'm a second time cancer survivor. So I know what I'm talking about. But I have to put my trust in Jesus. I have to know that he's my help. He's my healer. And you have to know it too. You can't just depend on the doctor. I thank God for the doctor. I thank the knowledge that God gave to the doctor. But can't nobody do it like Jesus. Can't nobody do it like Jesus. I'm telling you today, you better trust in God. You better accept it. Oh, my goodness. These health plans. Go to the one that can fix it for you. Amen. Door is fixed. No more medical plans for her. She don't have to deal with no more medication. She don't have to worry about that doctor appointment no more. Because now she's in the present with the physician, the great physician, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the comfort of family. Just remember that God loves each and every one of you. He really does. And in my conclusion, family, let this word comfort, knowing, the word of comfort, knowing that God is faithful to all his promises and benefits. Can you have joy? And thank God for Deborah's glorified body. Yes. We ain't gonna be crying about Deborah anymore because Deborah is happy. Deborah's having a joyful time. Yes. We're gonna miss her. We're gonna miss seeing her face and her body, her expression. We're gonna cry because we're gonna want her right beside my mom to be with me. But when you get to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for her, your soul gonna cry hallelujah to God be the glory. She has a new home. She will be with Jesus. No more death, tears, sorrow, crying, and pain. Can you thank God that she's healed? Amen, amen. So let, so let not your heart be troubled. For death, she's okay. She has no worry, no pain. And you can have joy and rejoice with her, knowing that she has made it into eternity.
Now, do you believe in the resurrection? Do you and you? Do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe that Jesus can give you life? Have you planned your life insurance, assurance in Jesus? Do you have a plan with him? And your plan is confessing Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Your plan is that you must be born again. Your life insurance with benefits, good benefits. Benefits that you ain't got to deal with this world no more. Consider your life plan with Jesus, amen? amen. I, I, I just want to take this time and let you know that when Jesus told his disciples that this sickness is not to death, but it's the glory of God. And I believe that everything we do, we need to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. I believe that this death even brought glory to this family right here. Y'all said, what are you talking about? How can death bring glory? Because she's in the presence of Jesus. But it's took this life that one her own got saved on yesterday. She got saved and gave her the plan of salvation and said she was ready. Yes. Her own daughter sitting right here. Yes, yes Lord.
even the one now, we believe that you are the resurrection. Yes, you are, Father. And the life. And the life. Father. Yes. We thank you, God, that knowing that there is life after death, yes, we can stand with assurance to know that in you, God, you have looked out for us, you have cared for us. God, as we continue in the furtherance of the service, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will continue to wrap your loving arms around this family as they go through this time of mourning and even a time of celebration. Thanking on your goodness, thanking on your grace, thanking on your mercy, oh God, for what you have done for our sister. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Now, God, you get the glory. Mm -hmm. Give us the victory. <laughs> we stand in awe of who you are. Because, because of this, this death was not in vain. But it caused someone to come out of darkness into this marvelous life. Hallelujah. And so we're excited about what you're doing in our lives. We're excited about what you're going to do in the life of this family. Continue to be with them in the days and the weeks and even the months and years ahead. For Lord, we know that in you, all things become new. We honor you, God, and we give your name the praise. In the wonderful name of Jesus, our God, our Savior, and King, we count it done. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, go ahead and perform the committal. We're going to ask all those not the family to stand. For as much as it says, please, Almighty God, and His wise providence, to take out of his out of his world and to himself the soul of our deceased sister, Deborah Yvonne Wilson. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his form, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, thy works do follow them. Pray with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And the benediction, may God love in Jesus Christ and the love of the Holy Spirit while this day you all be blessed. The benediction has concluded this service. The family would like to thank each of you for your prayers and your presence here today. And to the Wilson family, on behalf of the Van Warren Funeral Home family, we'd like to say thank you all for letting us be a blessing to you and serve you all. It's our hope and our prayer that God will continue to bless and keep you each other. You've been properly dismissed. Thank you for coming. Thank you.